this video, we'll review hydraulic brake bleeding for Shimano brakes using the Park Tool BKM-1 Hydraulic Brake Bleed Kit. We will concentrate on systems using flat bar levers. For Shimano drop bar levers, and for other brake brands, see our video playlist here. Brake bleeding requires a thorough technical knowledge of the braking system. If in doubt, or if your procedure is not working, contact the brake manufacturer's website for their model-specific information. It is important to always use the appropriate brake fluid for the brake being serviced. Never use a DOT fluid for brakes designed for mineral oil. Conversely, never use a mineral oil in brakes designed for a DOT fluid. Mixing fluids can cause damage to the components and lead to brake failure. Additionally, you should never share bleed kits between DOT fluids and mineral oils. You may also want to anticipate any advertent spills and drips on the floor. Dispose of any fluid in accordance with your local waste disposal authorities. Typical tools and supply for this procedure include the BKM-1 Hydraulic Brake Bleed Kit from Park Tool, appropriate mineral oil for the system, hex wrenches, 7mm wrench, Park Tool Piston Press PP1.2 tire levers or cone wrench, clean rags, isopropyl alcohol, spent fluid container such as a bottle or a bag, angle finder, toe strap and zip ties, safety glasses, and gloves. We are going to use this Shimano XTM8000 to walk through the process. There's always going to be new models, so be sure to check the manufacturer's website for the most up-to-date information. For Shimano, that is si.shimano.com. Inspect the lever for a reach adjustment screw. It can be located here or out here. Bring the lever away from the grip as far as it will go. Return it to the user's preference after the bleed. Some lever models also have a free stroke adjustment screw. From all the way tight, turn it three or four turns counterclockwise. Remove the wheel. Rotate the bike so there is consistent uphill travel from the caliper to the lever. For front brakes, this position's fine. On rear brakes, the bike may need to be tilted. Lower the stand as necessary. Remove brake pads from the caliper. Store in a clean spot. Reset the pistons back into the caliper body. Install bleed blocks between the pistons. Hold the block in place using the pad screw from the caliper. Finger tight is fine. Completely remove the cover from the bleed nipple and store this in a clean spot. Note, the caliper bleed location may vary. Here, it is an internal nipple below a cover. And here, it is on top of the body. If working on the front caliper, it is sometimes better to remove it from the mount. This allows better access to the external bleed nipples. Up at the lever, locate the bleed port screw. Remove the screw and check for the O-ring. Put these in a clean place. The lever port screw is an M5 thread, the same thread on the bleed funnel. However, if you first thread the funnel into the purple adapter, also an M5 thread, it makes it easier to correctly align the threads. Use care not to cross-thread the adapter. Gently snug the adapter. Remove stopper from bleed funnel. Viewing the bike directly from the side, take note of the bleed funnel's vertical alignment. Rotate the lever as necessary until the funnel is at 45 degrees forward from vertical. Attach the syringe holder above the caliper. Now prepare the syringe. Find the hose with one threaded end and one open end. Thread this onto the syringe, snugging it gently. Slide the compression sleeve over the end of the hose. Pull it up toward the syringe. Fill the syringe about two thirds full with the appropriate brake fluid. Hold syringe upright and pull back to clear the tubing. Now slowly and carefully push the plunger until the fluid just comes to the end of the tubing. Place the syringe into the syringe holder. Place a seven millimeter box end over the nipple. Push the hose end securely over the nipple. For external nipples, use the compression sleeve to help secure it. 
Use the wrench to open the nipple one half turn. For calipers with the bleed screw, loosen the bleed port screw one half turn. Push almost, but not all of the fluid into the caliper through the system and up to the bleed funnel. Look for any bubbles appearing in the funnel. That indicates air from the system is being expelled. The fluid was dirty. Continue to push until you see clean fluid entering the bleed funnel. Close the bleed nipple at the caliper. Now the syringe can be removed from the caliper. Pull back a little on the syringe as you disconnect it from the caliper. This minimizes dripping. Remove the syringe holder. The fluid in the funnel was dirty. Install the stopper. Remove funnel and dispose of the dirty fluid. Install funnel into the lever. Remove stopper and refill the funnel over half full with fresh fluid. The next step is to reverse the flow of the fluid from the bleed funnel downward and out the caliper. Select the hose that has no fittings on either end. Install the compression sleeve on one end. Install the other end into a waste disposal bag or other receptacle. Secure the hose inside the bag with the zip tie. Place a 7 mm box end over the nipple. Attach the hose to the bleed nipple. For external nipples, use the compression sleeve to help secure it. Be sure the bleed funnel is more than half full. Loosen the caliper bleed nipple one half turn. Squeeze the lever gently to start the flow of fluid from the bleed funnel down to the caliper and through the hose into the disposal bag. Tap along the length of the hydraulic hose to encourage any bubbles to dislodge. Keep an eye on the bleed funnel. Do not let the funnel run out of fluid. Add fluid as necessary to avoid letting any air into the brake lever port. When no more bubbles appear in the drain hose, close the caliper bleed nipple. Note, you may not see bubbles during this part of the bleed. Leave the funnel and bleed hose in place. If necessary, refill the bleed funnel to about half full. Pull the lever to maintain pressure on the pistons. Hold the lever to the handlebars with a strap or zip tie, or have someone hold it for you. Now quickly open and close the caliper bleed nipple once. Pressure will be lost at the lever as the fluid is forced out the nipple. Loosen the strap and re-pump the lever until it again feels firm. Retighten the strap. Repeat the quick opening and closing of the caliper bleed nipple. Now remove the strap from the lever. The caliper work is done. Remove the bleed hose. Tighten the bleed nipple to a torque of about four to six Newton meters. Install the caliper bleed cover. Squeeze the brake lever. It should feel firm now. If not, there's still air in the system. If necessary, repeat the bleed from the beginning, reassessing your process. The system should be free of air from the caliper and the brake line. However, there still can be bubbles at the lever just below the port. Rotate the lever so the funnel is now 30 degrees back from vertical. Squeeze and release the lever a few times while inspecting inside the funnel for any burp or bubbles. Now rotate the lever so the funnel is 30 degrees forward of vertical for a second burp position. Again, squeeze and release the lever to clear any remaining bubbles. When there are no bubbles appearing from either tilted position, rotate the lever until the funnel is vertical. Plug the funnel and remove it and the adapter from the lever. Always check that the adapter O-ring did not get left behind in the lever. Install lever bleed screw with O-ring and secure. And it's a mild torque of about one Newton meter. Return the lever to a writing position and secure.
Remember also to turn the lever reach and free stroke adjustment to their original settings. Remove brake block and clean lever and caliper with rag and alcohol. If removed, reinstall the brake caliper. Install brake pads. Install the wheel. Now pull the lever repeatedly to bring the pads to the rotor. Recenter brakes as necessary. After bleeding, remove hose from syringe and remove adapters from the hose. Let the hoses drain. Make sure any hose clips are open. A little remnant mineral oil in the syringe is not an issue. Otherwise, the syringe can be taken apart to be cleaned at your discretion. Thanks for watching. You can find hundreds more videos like this one on our channel here on YouTube. And we're constantly working on more. So be sure to subscribe for the latest content from Park Tool. And check out our website, which has even more content to help you make your bike better.